Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'll be talking about the process that it took for me to move from California to Dubai. If you haven't been to my channel before, I used to live in Dubai and I made uh, quite a few videos about what it was like living there and my experiences. So it's been about one and a half years, a little over a year and a half since I uh, moved back to the US from Dubai, but I still got a lot of people who hit me up um, asking me for advice and questions about my experience. So to get into it, I was contacted by a recruiter um, for the company I used to work for in Dubai on LinkedIn back in December 2019. So he hit me up and told me um, that he liked my profile and that he is considering me for a role. And he asked me if I would be interested in interviewing. So this kicked off a two month long process of a bunch of interviews and also negotiating salary and benefits and so on. So um, to condense everything, um, I left the U.S. Um, February uh, 19th, 2020. I know it was a crazy time then. Well, it's starting to be a crazy time. We really didn't know what was before us. So I started my new position in um, March 6th, 2020. But for me to get from the interview process to actually being on the ground in Dubai, um, after I got confirmation that the comp company wanted to make me an offer, I had to do a few things. One was I had to uh, get a background check and I had to go to my local police station. At the time it was Santa Clara County and um, get a background check. And it was basically a, um, a police report um, of my history. Um, more or less stating that I wasn't a criminal or wanted for anything. And I also had to get something similar from the State Department. Additionally, um, for the job that they were hiring me for as a management position, I um, had to have my um, degree attested. So um, that required getting a copy of my transcript. Well, not, no, sorry, not my transcript, but my actual like um, bachelor's degree certificate um, and having a stamp by the university. And then also I had to go to um, the, the, the state that my university was in and have it attested there, so Virginia. And then had to take um, this document which had already been attested by um, the university, the state of Virginia, and had to take it to the Department of State um, to get it attested there. And then from there to the UAE embassy um, located in Washington, D.C. So again, I was in California and fortunately, uh, my lovely sister, um, she did the groundwork of going to my university, um, getting the degree attested, taking it to the right department um, within uh, the state and then also um, taking it over to Washington, D.C. to do all the stuff. It was a big help um, um, to me. Um, because it meant I wouldn't have to fly from California to, to uh, do all that stuff. Not saying that if you're in California that you're going to have to go to D.C. You probably have to mail it, but it's just, since my sister is local, it was just easier. Um, it was also a challenging time for me because um, the time that I happened to be going through the process, my, um, my lease was expiring, and... It was a period of uncertainty because I didn't know how long the visa process was going to take. And so I remember my lease expired on the last day of January. And um, that meant like, you know, I, I was just in limbo because, of course, I wasn't going to sign a new lease. And then being in the Bay Area, things are just in general um, super expensive. But unfortunately, um, I had a friend at the time uh, who um, helped out. And so I was able to stay with a friend for a couple of weeks. So... Um, when I, um, landed in Dubai, um, I landed Dubai in Dubai, uh, March 3rd, uh, 2020. And before that, I'd spent a couple of weeks, um, in Istanbul, Turkey, just kind of exploring and, and hanging out and waiting on my, um, visa. It was cheaper for me to actually stay in Istanbul than it was for me to linger around in California. I could have went, I could have went, um, and stayed with, um, with family, but I just, you know, I just wanted to, you know, have some downtime before I got into my new project in the UAE. So, um, where was I? Yes, so arriving in, arriving in Dubai. And to be straight up, 
um, be completely honest, um, starting onboarding with the company was probably my worst experience ever. And I don't think the pandemic had anything to do with it. So I remember arriving with a guy from um, London and we're there to start our first day and process and everything. And we can't even get into the office. So we had to wait in the lobby. And I remember the manager coming down and asking us both if we had laptops. And so we told him, yeah, and so probably should have said no. But for the next two years, I actually worked from my own personal laptop. Um, and my background is cybersecurity. So that, um, that doesn't make sense at all. And that's not a good security practice. And it kind of baffled me because this company um, was always boasting about making record profits. So in my opinion, if you make record profits, then you have enough money to take care of your people and provide them with the resources they need to do their job. But that's a whole nother discussion that has nothing to do with the, the country. So for the next two, almost three months, from March 6th until May 31st, I lived in Airbnbs and I lived in hotels. So starting out with hotels and then Airbnbs. Why? Because I didn't have an Emirates ID. And you need an Emirates ID to um, get a, um, to be able to rent uh, um, an apartment and also to deal with um, the various agencies that you need like for example, getting your eJari and setting up Diwa and Empower. You need you need you need a Emirates ID for that. Um, and one of the reasons why it took so long to get to Emirates ID is because of the slowdown because of uh, COVID. So I was I felt like um, you know I was on limbo. One um, I hadn't been in my office. I hadn't met any of my colleagues face to face except for my manager that one day I was using my own stuff. And then um, there's a lot of uncertainty at the time. People were being uh, made redundant. And I was you know, a little bit worried that you know, I'd um, given up other opportunities to the US to move to this foreign country. Things are shut down. People are being made redundant. And then wondering if you know, I would lose my job and I would just kind of be in limbo and have to go packing back to the U.S. Fortunately, none of that happened. And, um, you know, after I got settled, then I, um, you know, started to meet people and get settled in with my job. So everyone's experience is different. You know, some people, they go there, they start their own business and then they get a freelancer, a freelancer visa or they buy it, they invest in property, and then they get a, um, a visa f from having their own property and so on. So basically, to live in the UAE, and I'm not talking about people who go there for like a few months and go back home and they go there for a few months back and forth. You need to have someone sponsor you, essentially. And so you're either sponsored by a company or you're sponsored by yourself um, if you have a freelancer visa or, or work for yourself. So those are the two ways. Or if you have a spouse and your spouse is working there, then you're sponsored by your, your spouse. So um, basically, in a nutshell, if you want to move to Dubai, you need to have some sort of opportunity. I know there's people who've seen videos about Dubai or they pass through for a vacation. They get excited and they just want to up and move to Dubai. But um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I recommend that you have a plan before going to Dubai because it can be an unforgiving place to, to fall into debt. And just in general, I mean, I wouldn't go to the next city over without having a, a plan, no matter how exciting the, the place is. So that's my um, recommendation to you is to check what the current steps are for moving there, follow whatever process they say, don't get emotionally attached to anything. Look at it from a um, you know, standpoint of does it make sense for your life um, in terms of you know, what the opportunities are going to be for you. Is the company going to value you? Are you going to get promotions and raises and so on? Is it going to take you to where you want to be in life? So um, yeah, I mean, that was my experience in a, in a nutshell. I got recruited. 
I got an offer, they did my work visa, and then the rest is history. As always, uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. If you have any feedback, leave feedback and I'll reply as soon as possible. And I appreciate you all.